here to talk about the, uh, the existing and potential links between Sweden and India in innovation, R&D. And uh, it's very, very uh, interesting to be here at this very juncture in time because, as you know, uh, Sweden and India has had very long links in manufacturing, in trade for, for almost a century now, increasing all the time. But when it comes to innovation and R&D collaboration, we're really in the first stages. And these are two countries of obviously very different in size, in scope, etc. but there are clear opportunities and clear problems on both sides. Whereas Sweden is one of the world leaders in innovation, we do fail to capitalize, to commercialize our innovations. India, on the other hand, has a deficit of engineers and doctors and, in general, private investment in R&D, where Sweden has the opposite scenario. So I think that the, the discussion this afternoon can be very, very interesting, and we have four stellar speakers with us. I'll introduce them one by one. And the first man out is none other than Dr. Rajiv Modi, who is a legend. He's the chairman and managing director of Cadilla Pharmaceuticals, one of the largest, uh, or the largest uh, private pharmaceutical company uh, in India. And uh, a company that has, uh, in the last you know, 10, 15 years, spread across the world with a host of collaborations and, and uh, different ventures. So with mu without much further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Modi. So good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's quite exciting. Uh, to be here uh, this afternoon, especially coinciding with the head of state visit, um, symbolizing changes uh, in the relationship uh, between our two great nations. Um, I'm sure people who are very, very interested in this important aspect of thinking in the future and building the future are here because innovation R&D is something which you invest your life um, and your livelihood uh, and if you're lucky, you get some returns. But I think the world is going through tremendous historic periods of change. Change is brought in by the whole dynamic of governments and leaders around the world aspiring, wanting, and maybe driven by political and demographic forces to consider improving life of human beings, citizens. And we in India are so fortunate that after 30 years, we have a government, a strong leadership in our Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who has a track record of over 13 years of successfully transforming a state out of the west of India, the state of Gujarat. As you, many of you may be aware of, uh, Prime Minister Modi was the Chief Minister of our state of Gujarat for over 13 years. And through that whole period, Gujarat has seen a vibrancy which touched the lives of every individual. From the, from the uh, most uh, prominent industrial uh, house, business house of India to the poorest and the least able villager living in a hut. I, you can believe me when I say that over this period, the individual, the, our leader, got tremendous trust and respect with his forward-looking, transparent policies. There's a reason why I bring this up. Go to a village in, in, in Gujarat, and even the poorest of the poor would smile and say, we trust Mr. Modi, because he is working for us. This is what he learned in 13 years. Yes, in the government prospered, the state prospered, there was tremendous development in infrastructure and so on and so forth, which we'll hear a lot. But the person believed in touching human lives. As you know, India's GDP is among the lowest in the world. However, we are the second largest population. So just imagine Please, ladies and gentlemen, just imagine what a transformational event would happen in the world when one of the lowest GDP countries would start becoming and growing uh, to become a larger economy. So that is what is in stage. There is a deep interest and devotion in the leadership of the government of our country today to make lives of every Indian a happy 
happy situation. And it is that genesis, and once, as you start understanding and believing that philosophy, the root of what causes changes in policies behavior, which are very, very historic, as, you, as I'm sure all of you know, and I know a past ambassador of Sweden is sitting in the audience, he will vouch for that. As you start uh, um, looking at what drives an individual, the policy of the government, the government which wants to make the lives of individuals, the 1.3 billion people, uh, much better. And that drives uh, Make in India initiative, Digital India initiative, Clean India initiative, Smart India initiatives, and so on and so forth. The tremendous need for increasing the level of skills for the over 500 million people over the next decade. Look at the challenges. And when these gen ladies, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, become more skilled, you can just see the unleashment of the power of, of the economy. So I think um, what I'm here to say and introduce is India has changed. India is changing rapidly, but also that the world forces are changing. We predict, many of us predict, political boundaries, areas of growth, changes in socio-economic uh, power centers of the world over the next 10, 20, 30 years are going to be quite different than what they are now. And I don't need to elaborate because many of you I can see, see sitting in the audience know that the economies are challenged. You know, you had a, almost a six, seven, eight, nine years of uh, continued uh, stagnancy in development in this part of the world. And similarly, in other powerful economies like the United States, North, South America, and Japan. India is leading in the Asia, uh, Asian region. It is this background of a determination of making change, of making people better, which is what is relevant. And I wanted to put that in perspective of how that driver is making us think of innovation in India. Um, there is a tremendous need in our country to scale up resources uh, in investment and research, where research and development expenditure is less than just 2%. And I don't even want to compare. Uh, I have colleagues uh, here in the panel who are going to talk about uh, expenditures in Sweden, in Nordic countries, and other developed parts. But in India today, just because of the dynamic of the country, and just because of ensuring that affordable food, clothes, and housing is available to as many people, there has been incentivization of pressure on pricing, although the market is huge. And therefore, there is a need for scale-up of investment in research and development as the economy grows. Because there, as you can imagine, there's going to be a huge, huge surplus of money is generated. On top of that, there is a determination of the current government to reduce wastages. So there's a double whammy. You know, you're going to have saving of resources which were deployed wastefully and increase in the income which will catalyze availability of resources for the economists you, of you in the audience to make sure that the missions of Make in India Skilling India, make digital India and the new technology, a clean, a healthy environment for people to live, a smart, smart environment for people to live, which are some of the initial directions of the government. And which all of these, all of these require tremendous collaborations between countries who have experience, who have gone through this historic events over the last 20, 30 years, and who can therefore collaborate, help, and work together with India. Having uh, some um, knowledge of uh, the culture and the people here, because for the last three, four, five years, I have spent so much time interacting with the brilliant minds and people of your country. I'm fascinated with the eco ecosystem of Sweden, as is in other parts of the world. And therefore, I think there is again a historic moment for people, the government of Sweden and the Swedes to come and visit India. Come and understand India. Come and talk to Indians. Come and live in India. Because you will realize the tremendous advantage that you can bring because of your knowledge, experience, and wisdom of having stayed, lived, and brought up in this ecosystem to the population of India. So there's a tremendous uh, 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 natural 
uh, event which could happen of collaborations between our two economies. India also needs to develop its knowledge and economy ecosystem. You know, I, I'm not here to talk about the legacy of what happened and what was right and wrong of the history, but I know one thing, we have a bright future. And since we want to have a bright future, we can learn. Uh, this afternoon I was uh, listening very carefully and meeting with the Secretary of State of your largest uh, uh, ministry, um, uh, I don't want to misspell his name, uh, Secretary of Ministry of Enterprise and Innovation, um, Mr. Oscar Stenstrom, and claimed that the new, under the new government in Sweden, this is one of the largest ministries. And he was talking and sharing of the 20, 30, 40 years of legacy of Stockholm City, when there were similar issues as was shown earlier during the day by my colleagues from Scania and uh, Volvo, and showing photographs of wastages, saying this is India today. And if someone had, and I don't have that, but if someone had a photograph of Stockholm 30 years ago, it would be similar. So over the last 20, 30 years, Swedes, you have worked together, you realized these challenges and brought in technology. It's most appropriate for India. So there is tremendous uh, areas of cooperation in innovations for projects which you have successfully commercialized. There was repeated insistence by the Secretary of State. We have done this. We had this is challenging issues. We had issues of pollution. We had issues of uh, uh, clean rivers. Now today you can drink water from the city, uh, from the river next to City Hall. But we couldn't do it some, some time ago. So we are, there are ways by which you know, uh, these technologies, these collaborative efforts can uh, really help. But more importantly, I think you have a land in Sweden full of universities, university towns, university cities. There is greater and greater need for learning from the ecosystem that the Swedes have developed in innovation, industry academy partnerships, the entrepreneurship of youngster Swedes. Again, I was reminded this, uh, this, this morning, earlier in the day, that among the Swedes, you are, as a, as a population, as a, as, 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 a, as a group of people, the young, it is, a, a culture or a country where the youngest uh, children of the youngest age go out and start living independently. So there is so much of freedom. Uh, we need to learn from that. The government uh, as of today in India plays an important role in funding and encouraging uh, collaborative uh, research between India and industry. And I think there is also, as the economy of our country continues to grow, uh, there is also tremendous need for uh, uh, industry uh, to partner. And I think there are tremendous successful models, both in the private funding, angel funding, investment banking, private equity, and also in, this, in the public, the stock exchange. There are lots of models that the finance systems, ecosystems of, uh, of countries like Sweden have learned and which we could adopt um, uh, in our country. So all in all, I think there are, uh, I would encourage tremendous collaborations at all level. And uh, from the pharmaceuticals and, you know, last few minutes, uh, Cadilla is one of the leading privately held pharmaceutical companies of India. Uh, India, as you all know, is uh, the home ground for the manufacture of cost-effective, affordable, high-quality generic medicines for populations around the world. Billions and billions of people of India and people around the world have benefited from products produced in India but sold and used in different parts of the world. 20% of America's generic medicines are made in India. And I can go on and on. In other words, the wisdom of the last decades policies and entrepreneurship of, you know, people like the chairman of our company, my father, and so on, have made India an ecosystem, has an ecosystem for producing the highest quality, cost-effective, affordable medicines for people around the world. It's recognized globally. As Indian pharmaceutical industry embarks on the next level of developing new medicines, of innovating new medicines, I think Sweden which is a birth place for lots of new products, uh, is a natural match uh, for pharmaceutical companies in India. So I want to 
I've given you a global picture of changes which are happening. I have shown you opportunities in all aspects of life, uh, where the two countries at the government level, political level, and the people level, business level can collaborate, it's because India is staged to make this change. And I have given you just in a few minutes, in the area of life sciences, possibilities of collaboration. Uh, thank you. Thanks.